Thank you for joining us for this episode. Uh, my name is Dave Kading, and we are excited to be uh, to be talking and broadcasting from the Vision by Design 2023 meeting. We're in the exhibit hall. If you have not been to the Vision by Design meeting, I encourage you to come to the next one, which is October 2nd through the 5th in Dallas. It is the meeting uh, about myopia management and orthokeratology. And uh, what better place to hang out with my friend Gary Gerber and talk about myopia, the guy who started a whole company around myopia, this vision 10 plus years ago of starting something that was just about myopic kids. Dave, thanks. Thanks, thanks for being on the Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. It's kind of, you know what's cool about being here as a guest is I don't have to do any work other than answer the questions. <laughs> I didn't have to set anything up. You just said show yeah. up. Gary was showing me his Power Hour <laughs> podcast, portable <laughs> podcast uh, studio that yeah. he would transition yeah. from conference to conference. And I'm not, so glad I don't Not exactly have that. portable. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Now, this is cool, man. I'm glad and it's a myopia podcast. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm digging the show, Vision by Design. That's where all the myopia nerds show up, and um, this is mm-hmm. the place, man. Yeah. yeah. So you may not know this, and our listeners are, 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 you know, are always new, so you may not know this as well, but over 60 episodes, uh, two years in the making. By the time you're listening to this, this will probably be about two and a half, three years in. But um, this is where we are uh, talking about myopia because... Um, there's so many things that are changing constantly in the world of myopia. I was just talking with Justin Kwan, and he was talking about 10,000 people have a MySight kit, um, and the vast majority of them have fit five patients or less. Well, that's certainly a problem, isn't it? It is. Yeah. We are not going to encounter this uh, myopia pandemic. Yeah, yeah we, can, we have to eliminate the scourge. Tame the beast, kill the beast. So my title at Treehouse Eyes, I am the Chief Myopia Eradication Officer. I'm really into titles, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of (laughs) cool. Instead of being like co-founder. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Yeah, because I I really think it's, you know, like enough. Somebody needs to put a stake in the ground and do this the right way, with the right message, with the right technology. And that's really where Treehouse Eyes came from. I really felt that... You know, after practicing for years, not a consulting company for years, I wanted to leave a legacy to optometry that was more than we'll teach you how to be profitable. I mean, doctors will be super profitable with myopia management, but I really wanted to, like, help somebody. And who better to help than myopic kids? And with Justin's example, given that so few doctors are really rolling up their sleeves and doing this as non-dabblers... I want the Treehouse Eyes to be the legacy that that's going to give the doctors all the tools that they have to really start the eradication of myopia. Okay, I have a question I've never asked you, and I don't know that I've ever thought to ask you this before. Treehouse Eyes was not an inexpensive endeavor to start. You started a whole practice. You started doing beta testing. You went through if this, then that. If not this, then we go this direction. You hired doctors who were looking into and analyzing everything. You had a practice. Uh, uh, you had a practice management company that was making doctors better at what they were doing already. Why couldn't you have just done this within the power practice? Because I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and I failed. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm not there anymore. I can say that. In a power practice, I... I I, I turned it over to a really great, like I'm super proud the guys yeah. that bought it. They're doing a They're great, doing great job. Um, so I tried, and I have the same challenges that we have now where doctors are still hesitant to bring up the myopia discussion with parents. And one of the hesitations is, well, it's not covered by insurance. It's going to cost more. I don't. I don't know what to talk about. Mom says, why haven't I heard about this before? I don't know how to answer. And there were so many other things at the power practice outside of myopia that I just, I kind of gave up. And that's, you know, it was, it was a good thing really because my frustration and not being able to get my own clients to do this led me to call up my co-founding partner, Matt Erding, who at the time was uh, working at Alcon. And I'll, 
I, I can say this because Matt isn't here, so it's going to be too late. Once it's recorded, it's recorded. Um, I called up Matt and I said, I have this idea. Um, I want to open up this company. It just does myopia management, but I want to, like, I want to conquer the world, right? And I know I can't do it by myself. I need somebody with your business acumen. He's not an OD. He's got his MBA from Duke. He's an Air Force captain. He worked for Jack Welch at GE. I mean, he's, just, he's, he's literally the smartest business guy I know. It's kind of, he scares me sometimes. Um, so I, I called him up and talked about the money that, that we spent um, to, to do this. Matt was like, you know, it sounds like a good idea. And he was dialed into myopia because he ran Al Connor in Australia. He knew Brian Holden. He's one of the few business guys who understood myopia. He goes, I'm not going to leave my high-paying, secure job at Alcon because Gary had a brain fart in the back of a napkin. And so what we're going to do is a lot of research, consumer research. And I said, that sounds expensive. He says it is. The two of us are going to split the bill. And this is before we even opened the door, man. So <laughs> I'm already, like, way in the hole here. Yeah. And if the consumer research points to this is not going to work, wow, it was a lot of money. And that was before we opened the door. So, so this is uh, this this is something in the realization with power practice that doing specialty care at a really high level needed to be something that was specifically focused on, and yeah. and that's maybe why it didn't work within the power practice is just doing this and dabbling with it isn't going to crush it. Yeah, and look, I I really think you know myopia management is optometries to lose. Like, I've heard some doctors say, well, it's not specialty care. You know what? If if you do it the right way, it is because, you know, da dabbling in vision therapy is pencil push-ups, mm -hmm. right? And dabbling in myopia is like, well, if the mom asks me, maybe I'll think about ortho -K. It's like you have to commit to doing it. It's not hard. I mean, I, 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 was, I was a solid C-plus student in SUNY. I could do it, right? But you have to it's, – it's really configuring the office – and the mindset and the mojo of the doctors and the staff, that's that's the big shift. Like, we're going to do this. We're not going to dabble. We're going to commit to it. Doctors don't dabble with presbyopic eyeglass lenses. That's a part of the DNA of the practice. There's not a doctor in this room who has a presbyop walks in where the staff is defaulting to flat-top bifocals. They go to straight to digital high-end progressives. With myopia... A minus 75 kid walks in, everybody's thinking about, okay, this kid's walking out with a pair of glasses, and maybe we can talk about myopia. Like, that's backwards. Let's talk about myopia. Yeah, the kid needs glasses, but let's talk about myopia. He still needs glasses. So it's, it's really, it's a, it's a mind shift. And that, to me, that's, a, that's specializing, whether it's VT or neuro or low vision or dry eye. You know, doctors that dabble in dry eye are the ones that have a, an IPL on the backs with a dust cover on it because I bought it and nobody wants to do it. Well, it's because you're not doing it the right way, man. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a part of your practice and important it's a part or it's not. Yeah. So some of the obstacles that I hear from doctors and, you know, uh, I am a Treehouse Eyes uh, uh, doctor now, um, but you've heard all of the reasons why not to do myopia management. And as such, you've had to answer those questions to a point where you tell people, we can help you with those. What are some of the more common reasons people are saying no to doing myopia management in, in a doctor office? Because, uh, they'll say, Gary, because every time I bring this up with the parent, they say, I never heard about this before, so I want I want to wait. I just never heard about it before. So I've never heard about it. Right. What, or what my insurance is not going to pay for it, which is a great thing. Um, haven't heard about it before. That's probably one of the big ones. And at, actually, there's a lot to unpack with that. I haven't heard about it before. With the Treehouse Eyes practice, by the time they get into the doctor's office, they have heard about it before. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you're doing myopia management already beyond non-dabbling, you're still getting parents coming in. How come I haven't heard about this before? And the reason is because you're the lone wolf in your market that's waving the myopia flag because not enough other doctors are doing it. If they were doing it, the pediatrician would have told the mom about it because they would have heard about it. Um, the, the other doctor they used to see, they would have told them. It. So the parents would have heard about it if you weren't the only one who was non-dabbling. 
with Treehouse Eyes, by the time the parent gets to the practice, they visit our company website, they visited the doctor's website, they see the important thing is we've got about 70 locations around the country, and Dave, you are a Treehouse Eyes doc, actually 2X, I know you got two locations that are Treehouse Eyes practice. Um, the, the parents realize that you are part of something bigger than just yourself. You're not the only one saying this is a thing. It's kind of like Invisalign or Cool Sculpting or pick one of those national brands. We're the only national myopia management brand on, on earth, really, that's doing this. So the doctors that work with us are, are still getting, why haven't I heard about this? But, oh, I see you're part of this thing. I guess this must be, like, legit. You're not the only guy doing this. And that, that's super important. It's important, to the, it's, it's important to the parents to have some modicum of confidence that you're not the only guy doing this. Yeah. And if, if you are in a region or city that has a Treehouse Eyes clinic, one of the other really cool things is somebody having a clinic a mile, two, three, five from your practice, it actually makes your myopia management practice better because there is somebody shouting from the rooftop about myopia management on social media and on the web. And then when your patients come in and ask you about it, they're already, they're already uh, ready to go. No question. When we first opened, we have two company-owned centers. We opened um, a little over seven years ago in um, D.C. Metro, Bethesda, Maryland, Tyson's Corner, Virginia. And companies that have myopia management products, RGP lenses and soft lenses, would tell us that all of a sudden, their accounts that are in regions near our two centers, all of a sudden they're fitting way more lenses yeah. because yeah. of us. It's the halo effect of our marketing. Right, right. and that's the, the beauty about this is it's not just a selfish approach of treehouse eyes for your practices only. I, I kind of say that you know the AOA makes optometrists better be, whether you're part of the AOA or not. And, and I know you've got perspectives on this, but Vision Source promotes private practice, whether you're in Vision Source or not. Treehouse Eyes advocates for myopia management, whether you're in Treehouse or not, right? You're pushing the envelope no on insurance question. companies. Yeah. Right? Dude, it's, it's, it's the classic example of rising tide. Yeah. You know, we have, in most of our doctors, our doctors in our model, they can use any contact lens that they want. We don't dictate that in our model. They can charge anything they want. That said... Our doctors tend to charge and collect, there's a difference between charging and collecting, some of the higher fees in the country. And generally about 50, it's like 51 or 52% higher than the average fee in the U.S. from our docs. So, yeah, and you talk about rising tide, we're, we're, we're rising the economics for the practices. Um, and, we're, you know, we're spending our money and we're making somebody else's practice busier. But yeah. I, look, there's so many myopic kids, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't. So let's talk a little bit about the clinical outcomes. So you published a, a document a couple years ago, or a year ago, um, on the data that has been collected on hundreds of children who have gone through the treehouse eyes myopia management. So you're not just saying you know, here's some marketing information, here's how to get more myopes in the door. One of the things that I liked about it is I get to interview all these people, but all of these amazing practitioners and amazing researchers are on your advisory board. So when you go and build a protocol, you're looking for the best in class. It's not just Dave Kading coming at this with, oh, I read an article, I'm gonna start doing this. Talk a little bit about the outcomes from your protocol um, and, and how it's really being effective for kids. Yeah, so on our clinical advisory board, the guys you're talking about, I'll give you a couple names, Errol Smith, Tom Aller, Jeff Cooper. I could probably stop there, but I won't. Uh, Vance Thompson, a very renowned refractive surgeon. Uh, we have a pediatric ophthalmologist. We have a pediatrician. You know, we got, we got the right people on the bus in the right seat, to use a worn-out cliche. Um, our... Uh, camp study, which is what you're referring to, CAMP, which was published in Optometry and Vision Science. It's a peer-reviewed journal. We started out with about 1,500 kids. 342 met the inclusion criteria. And based on that, we came up with what we call our Triage Vision System 2.0, which is what you're referring to, which is a 
really for the doctors really simple to use but for us seven, seven years in the making with way too much money spent on it but it we we did it we got across the finish line first one that we're aware of it's essentially a one-page flow chart that says if the kid comes in with these risk factors this prescription start with X if you do X and the kid gets his eye gets bigger by Y millimeters switch switch to Z so it's a great flow chart for veterans or for noobs because you know clinically where's your best odds of success at success where should you start treatment now that said it may say start with atropine and the mom could say i don't want to use atropine for whatever reason give me a soft contact lens and and do it you it know, allows and, for that yeah absolutely. but you know gary the, you perceive that somebody who's a noob versus somebody who's been doing this for 10 years you know i've been doing it for 15 um if I follow that protocol, is there much of a difference between my outcome and a newbie? Yes. The data supports, if you look at, the, so what's cool about ours, the fact that we have it built in. Let me rephrase that. If I'm following your protocol, right. does it matter how long I've been doing this? Or is no. somebody brand new to Treehouse Eyes going to have similar clinical effects? I got it. Yeah, if you have a, a seasoned veteran like yourself or a noob who just went through VBD boot camp, you're going to get the same result. And that result is likely, highly likely to be better than if you just winged it. If you said, I'm really comfortable with ortho K, everybody gets getting ortho K, and I'm okay doing a minus two with a five cylinder axis like 62. I'm good luck with that. But um, if you're crazy enough to do it, um, have at it bro but you know we we have data that shows it's not necessary and the cool thing with the protocol is that it's real life practice so in a clinical trial like in in academia or research lab if you start with x and the patient doesn't get the desired effect you stop and you throw them out of the study like it, it didn't work right with us if they come back and the kid's eye got bet got bigger X didn't work. We're switching to Y, right? And we have that data. Like, what happens when you switch from X to Y? We, we know. And that's real life. Like, you're not going to stop in a, in a practice. I'm sorry this didn't work. You, you Can you over. share some of the outcomes as to how well we're slowing the progression with the protocol? You know, how often are you having to change lenses? There was a substantial percentage of kids that were in ortho K for, I think, three years that didn't ever change the lens. Had, had well, they, they got new lenses every year. Excuse right, me. Right, yes, they right, didn't have to right. change. We didn't the have to change the parameters. Thing. Right. We have our own proprietary design, which is probably one of the things, one of our secret sauce pieces. Um, and as much as I can say on a podcast, it's got a smaller treatment zone than than other lenses. Um, and I mean, as far as efficacy, about seventy eight percent, seventy eight percent no change after one year. Um, I'm. Honestly, a little fuzzy on the numbers because I just read another paper. I gave you another paper. <laughs> but 78% after one year yeah. is a pretty effective because, as I always say, what's the most important two years in any myopic child's life? The next two. Because that's when the progression is going to be the fastest. So if you're at 78% in the fastest of the coming years, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. And it, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, this is not, not to bash my contact lens buddies this is not data on file at company x man this was you know we, we hired a third party to to go through this data that's why it took so long it was so expensive because they kept sending us bills well i don't know you, you kind of switched the uh, biometers like two years through we got to throw this kid out another one you got to throw out that's went from 1500 to 342 yeah so uh, I, I wanted to talk about that study because sometimes people think about Treehouse as just trying to get people in the door, and I want people to know that it is, uh, yes, it's driving people into the office, but also, once they're in, there's a great treatment to really help slow down the progression. The doctor can be trained on this. You can choose to use it or not. You don't have to, right? You can use whatever protocol that you would like, but you'd be silly to not... Uh, pick up on this protocol. But one of the other things that I think may be m misunderstood about what Treehouse does, and I'd love to give you a platform to talk about it, is 
the implementation piece, right? We've got other resources, video things that are coming out that are great, all of, you know, raising all the, all the tides and so forth. Talk a little bit about how parents are being taught about myopia even before they come in or while they're in a treehouse office. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you're right. It kind of starts with you need, we have to get the patient to get into the office. We spoke about that. We have to treat them clinical protocol, then we have to execute. You know, the hardest thing in any practice is actually doing the work, right? So we've got a great practice development team uh, with on-demand training for doctors and for staff. And we have software tools. For example, we recently launched uh, Triosize AMP, our automated marketing platform. And the way that works is uh, the mom says, you know, typically, well, I never heard about this before. I want to think about it or I want to check with my spouse. They scan a QR code and they get a video delivered, a three minute video, really professionally done that talks about this is why a triage size doctor is recommending myopia management. Um, and if they don't respond to that video Two days later, not one day, not three days, but two days because that's what we determined was optimal to get it. Sounds launched. like Matt was really up on this. Oh data. man, this like, was he's like a spreadsheet what, thing, man. We, and you're I'm scary, like this I'm is like, what dude, we should do. And do Matt's like, a, no, a day is fine, man. No, we got to test. Hey, no, it's a day. It's a day. It's fine. One day, two days. What's the freaking difference, bro? Come on, man. His parents are busy. Two days. That's, that was that's that's what won. Um, two days later, they get a reminder text. You haven't watched the video. Uh, if they watch. If they don't watch it, they get another. We have seven videos, about three minutes each. It doesn't take 150 videos. Parents don't have the time. Key thing with the videos, exact right consumer tested message delivered at the right time with the perfect message. Right message, right time, right person. Um, we have that. We have uh, my TDA Myopia Treatment Decision App, which is a way to plot out the kid's progression. It's kind of modeled after the pediatrician growth plate. They put the dot on a piece of paper. Ours is web-based. Um, yeah, we've got just you know, great execution tools. We have a certification program. After you get trained, you and your staff watch the video. Somebody shows up in your office to make sure you're doing it the right way. If you are, then we, then we will list you on our national website, and that's when the marketing is turned on. So it's very, very comprehensive from, it's, you know, it's, it's A to Z and then before A and after Z. And, um, you know, with things constantly changing in this business, we're doing a lot of studies and research with devices. We actually have a um, two-site test right now. We have, this is going to blow your mind. I don't know if we talked about this. Okay, how about an at-home axial length home monitoring device system that works on an iPhone that works. Now, it doesn't work today, right? <laughs> and by the time you see it, hopefully in two years, it'll be FDA approved and it'll work, but it, it works. It doesn't work. It's not accurate enough, but it works. We're doing stuff like that. Uh, we worked with all the big capital equipment companies, stuff that is available here now. We had four or five years ago. Our doctors got to play with it. We're going to get eyeglass lenses before anybody else because we're doing it the right way. You know, the manufacturers know that we'll get the right message to the right parents. So, yeah, it's 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 kind of like I said, it's A to Z and everything after Z. Like, that's that's part of it. We're yeah. trying to stay a couple steps ahead. It's a rap. Like you said, when you kick this off, it's rapidly changing. Things are yeah. moving quick. We've got to stay on top of it. Well, I'm glad that you are at the helm and uh, are leading the charge. Um, thank you for being on the podcast and sharing your perspectives. It was my pleasure. It was, even though, you know, I think I did more talking than I should have. Yeah. But, you know, you get the guy from Jersey up here, you ask him a question. I'm going to ramble, man. Even though I have no <laughs> voice left. <laughs> I sound like I just finished a, a tour with my rock no. band. I have no voice I left. I love dude. it. I love it. It's good. Well, thank you again. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future episodes. And again, we're recording from the Vision by Design 2023 meeting in Chicago. Uh, make sure to uh, stay abreast of what's happening in the Vision by Design world, uh, AAOMC's uh, website, as well as uh, Vision by Design October 2nd through the 5th in Dallas. We'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for joining us.